Hello, good morning, and welcome to White Details, my detail in the white way video series. Today, we're gonna to be looking at how to clean your vehicle's glass efficiently, sort of my way. I'm not saying it's the correct way, but it's my way of doing so. We're looking at some of the gear that's used. We're gonna be doing some tips and tricks and the do's and don'ts. So welcome to the channel. If it's your first time here, my name is Jim, owner and operator of White Details based in Lincolnshire in the United Kingdom. If this sort of content is right up your street, then do consider hitting subscribe for future content and uploads. I have to say though, this, my usual content, my usual uploads are more case studies. So the vehicle from start to finish, the A to B, the journey of the detailing process. This glass cleaning episode is being done by popular demand actually. And someone reminded me recently that I did actually touch a little bit on the glass back in a video on my Jag XKR, the white Jaguar for, I prepped it for wax stock, the detail and show in the United Kingdom. Um, I touched on some of the glass tips back then, but today I hope to do it in more detail and show you more of the gear and kits used. Glass isn't something that most people enjoy doing. To be honest, it's maybe something that, that if we did it a poll or a tally of those jobs that people would like doing the least, I would be confident in saying that glass would be up there in the top three for sure. I would say that it's one of the most important areas to get right. Nobody likes holograms or movement across the paintwork. Nobody likes the swirls. Equally, smears, smudges, greasy fingerprints all over the glass. It, of course, detracts from the overall image. And of course, now you've got crystal clarity glass, properly clean, it's better visibility, so it's safer. So the demo car today is the Audi. It's an Audi S3 saloon. It's been here for two days so far. Today is day three, so two and a half day booking. And pretty much now the final piece of the puzzle is the glass. So let's start by uh, looking at some of the kit that we're gonna be using. This of course comes down to personal preference. This is a combination of kits that I've been using over many years now. It seems to work for me. Other people might have systems and products that work better for them. Of course, there are a multitude of different cleaners, different towels, different accessories on the market. Uh, but my workhorse cleaner, my go-to glass cleaner on the most part is G-Technic G6 Perfect Glass. Also achieving great results, however, with Sansom's Glass Cleaner, Gion Glass, and more recently, Enzo Pure View is an option as well. When it comes to the choice of towel, I would say the towel is as important, if not more important than the chemical you use in itself. As you will see in a small example later on, the towels determine how well the residue is removed and sometimes it's not the correct towel for the application. But whilst using g Technics G6 Perfect Glass, I will usually reach for a short pile application towel. Traditional microfibers with the longest strands have a tendency of linting, which we don't want on the glass. And then nine times out of 10, the removing towel, the secondary towel, I'd always recommend using two. Don't try and use one towel to apply, flip it over, buff. It's always gonna be damp, it's always gonna be full of products and you will get smears. Two towels, secondary towel, nine times out of 10 is gonna be a waffle weave towel. The blue towels as seen here, these are the Rag Company Dry Me River, which are actually drying towels. So on the most part, you've got a glass cleaner and you've got a towel, great. There is a little bit more to it. If you want, to, it's up to you. You can take it as far as you want. But for the most part, cleaner, towels, you're good to go. But here there's an array of accessories, bits and bobs, um, from water spot removers to clay bars, uh, polishing discs for machine polishing, and rain repellents to help with the protection aspect. I suppose the first part of the process, if you are doing a deep clean and you want the glass as best possible, the clay bar. Particularly important on the front facing windscreen where it has the impact and also on the roof if you've got a panoramic roof, you've got dirt, you've got pollen, you've got etchings and it rains, it gets baked in the sun, it gets pretty contaminated. The clay bar pulls contamination from a surface, be that the paintwork or your wheels or in this case the glass. Pulls away dirt from the surface which isn't necessarily washed away or isn't polished away and it's quite an important step. Clay bar of choice is AMD Tells Clay with the only lubrication required is water. 
Although lots of people do actually use a clay bar on their paintwork on the car, they'll often forget about the glass. Especially important if you are planning to apply a repellent type coating later on. Another great product for your armory potentially is Gion's water spot remover. Personally, I've had great results with this. If a vehicle has been washed in baking hot sunshine and the water is deposited on the glass, it doesn't wash away, it doesn't come off of a glass cleaner. The water spot remover is a fantastic product to use as almost a pre-clean before you go on to do a clean clean. A quick word of warning though, it does stay in the back of the bottle. Products can damage glass or other surface if left to dry, but I'll touch more on that later. When it comes to glass polishing, there are various options and routes available, hand polishing and machine polishing, different polishes, seri glass being popular, which is actually serium oxide. Seri glass I would use with a machine polisher on a glass polishing disc if I really want to go to town and there's potentially wipe haze scratches in the windscreen which need reducing or removing. A lot of the glass repellent kits you can buy will come with their own polish, G10 and G4 Nanotech glass polishers seen here and Gion Cleanse which can be used by hand, which I will do later on the S3 or machine. Right, first thing I'm gonna wanna do, uh, because I've been polishing on this car, uh, and actually whatever the refining polish I used on the gloss black B pillars and C pillar, very watery, so I've generated, as you can see, a lot of splatter uh, in grease, and just generally, there's excess amounts of dirt and polish on there that I, do, I don't really want to contaminate the towels, the nice towels that I'm going to be using inside and out of the car. I don't want to use them um, to clean that area up. So, Gion Prep, just a degreaser. I'm going to pre-clean, if you will. Obviously, if you're not a detailer, you've not been polishing your car, you haven't generated this mess, you won't need to be doing this. This is just a, a little shortcut for me to make sure uh, I'm going to be keeping things as efficient as possible. You will very rarely see me spray directly onto the glass, um, inside or out. It's as important not to do it on the outside, in my opinion, as it is for the inside. Come on to that maybe later. Unless, of course, it is quite a large glass pane and you're able to do so without surrounding the, covering the surrounding areas in product and overspray. The paintwork, as far as I'm concerned, on this Audi now is finished. So I don't want to water spot it with chemical or whatever else. All right, that's the dust, polish, grease, splatter. That's that all off the vehicle now. One thing to watch for if you have just washed the car, bear in mind this car has been washed for three days, it's been blown dry. It is bone dry. There's no residue of water damp anywhere. If you have just washed the car, the window rubbers around the glass, there's gonna be water, there's gonna be moisture there unless you've blown that down. So that's a bit of a pain. So try to avoid um, contaminating your towel with a damp microfiber. First little tip I'm gonna give is to wear gloves, to wear nitrile gloves. If you're hot, if you're clammy, if you're oily or sweaty, you're gonna be leaving residue on the towel, which is gonna be transferred to the glass, and we don't wanna be working dirty, we wanna be working clean. And at the same time, if you sort of, you're cleaning the inside of the windscreen and your wrist or whatever touches, and it's gonna leave a, a sticky, sticky mark. Second little tip, On windows that have an A-frame, so where the glass isn't exposed at the top, some cars don't have a window frame at all, so you can get to the very top of the glass without having to drop it down out of the frame. But without dropping the window, we're not otherwise able to get to that uh, inch or two that's hidden in the framework. I will start by doing all four uh, the tops of the windows, and then they'll go back up. I'm not worried about doing the whole section of the glass here. I'm just literally doing the top three, four, five inches. Because when the glass goes up, the bottom of it needs to install anyway, of course. So. By the way, all of the windows drop then because I did it off the key fob. If you press and, uh, press and hold unlock, the windows will lower. Press and hold lock, the windows should. The doors, ah, it does work. 
Uh, not every car has that though. So of course, if it doesn't work, ignition on, you have to do it manually. All right, all four tops of the windows are done using one of my favorite cleaners, G Technics G6 Perfect Glass. Um, the main thing, the main ingredient for decent glass, I think is speed. One, two, three, four. If you were to apply to this face of the window and then apply to the interior of the window, the product, the residue has had time to dry. Straight away, wipe on, smudge it over, smudge it across, fold the towel. Getting that first initial wipe with the dry cloth as soon as you can, it stops the residue, literally stops it drying out. The biggest tip I think you'll get from today is knowing to work faster with the on off application. So that now, if I put a light to that, however the interior hasn't yet been done, so let me do that quickly. One, two, three, four. Of course, the top sections of the glass have already been done, but it doesn't hurt to sort of re-overlap the same areas. On, off. Quick fold of the towel. Getting my fingers down the side of the plastic work there in the frame because the towel doesn't naturally fall into there. So pushing the towel into it. Likewise down the bottom there. Now that, let me get a light. Perfect. That's where you want to be. That is glass that I'm happy with clean all the way to the top, it's clean down the bottom. There's no movement, there's no holograms, there's no smears or smudges. Although it looks like there's one on camera here, top right. I think that's just a refraction of the light. One, two, three, four. On one very fast wipe over before doing a more thorough buff after turning the cloth. Towel, sorry. Hopefully you can see why at this point you wouldn't want to spray directly over the glass because you're going to get over, over spray onto the paint in the adjacent areas which are now nice and finished. Of course, if you can't get a finger down to the very bottom channels, which you can, you could always improvise with a prong or a, uh, a wooden stick of some sort of plastic skewer, a wooden skewer to push the cloth deeper into the crevices. Geon water spot, the water spot remover I flashed up and showed you. Um, I'm not using it on this job, it doesn't need it. The car is well cared for, it's well maintained, there are no issues uh, with spots. But panoramic roofs, which are exposed to baking sunlight and pollen and dust and water, and the water sits there for periods of time, it is common for water spots to occur. On the bottle of Geom, it does say, can damage glass if used and allowed to dry. It doesn't say don't use it. I've had fantastic results with the water spot remover and I just wanted to reach out and speak to Mr. and Mrs. Gion before putting this video together to sort of get their view and get their word. There was basically one or two issues with the product on much older glass systems where it had been left, it had been left to dry. Um, to date, never had a problem. And the trick is, once you've used the water spot remover is to follow up immediately with something like a degreaser or an IPA Geon Prep to wipe away the water spot residues before they dry. And of course you go on then to use your standard glass cleaner as well.
It's always good fun doing the rear glass, the rear windscreen on a vehicle like this, a saloon where the glass doesn't come up with the boot. So you've got to get in there and sometimes it's a real squeeze, which we'll come on to soon. One, two, three, four. Smudge, smudge, smudge. Buff, buff. Right, okay. Rear wind side on the inside. Rear wind side. Rear window, rear glass. Uh, where possible, lower the rear seats. That's gonna make your life easier for a start. What I'm also doing at the minute now, now I'm going onto the bulk windows on the inside, is my second towel. There's a bit of dampness to it. It's that used, it's that saturated. It's picked up a lot of the residue itself. So I'm now switching to a second dry cloth. So it's always worth having two, maybe more of each to work with. And the idea now is I wanna be doing that motion, which means I've gotta go in head first. Shoes off. Really difficult getting the cameras lined up for this, um, so apologies for the bad angle. I'm gonna do half the interior glass at a time. Any more than that, then the residue starts to dry out. Using the, can you see that? Can I see you? Rather than my hand being that way around, sometimes it's worth having your palm inverted and using the upward side of your hand to control the cloth and to get down into the bottom of the channel where the glass meets the, the bodywork. Smudge, 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 smudge. All around the third brake light. Reverse the hand, finger dips down to the bottom, pushing the towel down, using a little bit of upwards pressure there. Switch it out. Upwards hand. All right, well, I'm sweating now. It's hot and stuffy in there, so without the gloves, I would be quite oily and sweaty. Uh, what I was saying earlier about the reasons why the gloves are on. Yeah, definitely worthwhile. Yeah, so trying to navigate that with the headrests and the seat rests and the seat backs all up, it really does become a bit of a headache. Whereas you drop the seat, you've got full access. And now that's looking pretty sharp. Okay, windscreen. Get yourself comfortable, same procedure. Half the glass, invert the hand, fingertips into the corners. Again, none of this, don't be spraying. The amount of times that have been prepped by dealerships uh, that have got splatter and gunk and chemical stains, chemical stains on the dashboard from some fool doing that. And when you do do that, sometimes when it drips, it can drip beyond the point where you can reach. So you've always got a dried stain where there's a drip from somebody doing that process. So one, two, three, four, five, away from the rest of it. Be sensible about where you spray. Quick once over. As it starts to flash, as it starts to evaporate. Turn the towel. One thing I hate doing is the vanity mirrors. And I'll come on to that later to tell you why. Review mirror. All right, our first obstruction this side, of course, steering wheel. If you have the option of adjusting it, because it's right up there in the way, pull it down, push it in, give yourself some more space. One, two, three, four. The back of my hand. Twist. 
twist that out the way, lean across, switch hands. I realize this is probably very boring to be watching. And I have to say, I much prefer doing the normal videos, the case studies, as opposed to the tutorial time, tutorial style. Continue to buff until dry. Now, can we get this up without the key? That's the question. Yes, we can. Great. Uh, infotainment systems are delicate. Glass, extremely resilient and tough. Um, this one's nice and easy. It's a straightforward, simple wipe. What you don't want to do is just use a single side and use fingertip pressure. You don't want to be putting any downwards pressure onto this. The delicate, they can stretch. So I'll fold it as many times over as possible. So it's a bit of a pad. It's a deep, um, soft pad. Again, using G6, which is fine. A couple of wipes and then using a deep folded up waffle towel. Buff it away. I've got a better example of an Audi R8 that visited recently where the screen isn't as quite, it's not quite as easy as this to clean. So I'll show that on the footage. And that can go away. Go away. When it comes to the dials and the clocks, um, if, it's, if it's a recent modern digital display like this or just the perspex with the clocks and the dial, analog. I often see it where people, they've washed the car down, done the interior themselves, they've used an interior cloth, a damp APC cloth, all-purpose cleaner, an interior cleaner, to wipe over the steering column, on the dashboard, the doors, and they go over the screen. And it's gonna smudge, it's gonna look awful. And it does look awful. So glass cleaner, again, fine. Same principle, use it folded up, don't allow it to be thin and lots of pressure. You wanna be delicate and soft, using your fingers to sort of direct the towel into the corners. You probably can't see this, I realize it's dark. And that's all that should need. No smears, no smudges. Clean. Never to be disturbed again. On that note, in the winter, when your car's possibly condensed on the inside, try and avoid using them foam yellow sponges, the blocks that you can dry the interior of the glass down. They're awful and it will look awful when it dries. Try and allow it to evaporate with the car's system. Right, going back to the touchscreen. Sorry, the infotainment, this isn't a touchscreen, but I wanna show you an example. Enzo Core, it's an interior dressing slash cleaner, which has UV protectors, anti-static inhibitors. But let's say you've got a Tesla or a new shape Merc or whatever with a big touchscreen, which is literally operated by touch. You're gonna get lots of fingerprints. Core, can reduce, what's it say? Uh, can be safely applied to displays and touchscreens for the purpose of lessening the fingerprint impression. So you shouldn't get as many fingerprints on the touchscreen. Again, don't spray direct. I'm gonna spray outside the car onto a damp towel and use that. Very lightly. And buffed in a similar fashion. I've been very impressed by the Enzo gear. It's quite new to me. It's quite a new line in general. All right, back outside. Um, talking of Enzo, their, what's it? Pure View. Pure View Enzo glass cleaner. I have been using this towel management, this product, this system for years. It's worked. If, it, if it's not broke, don't try and fix it. So what we know now is this front driver's window is looking good. No problems here at all. Now for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna use this on the same panel, two different cloths. I've got new cloths now. Again, it's a short pile, low linting cloth, different to the first one. 
Same technique. Okay, same technique in different cloths. Can you see the smearing, a bit of smudging going on? That's not to say that Pure View isn't a good glass cleaner. It's just, it doesn't work well with the waffle weave towels. Now I've switched my buffing towel to a Kirkland. This is a much longer pile microfiber. I'll use the same application cloth, redo the same area but switch out the towel to a different towel. Nothing different there at all, apart from the blue waffle versus the yellow Kirkland. I'm not even gonna look first, I'm gonna bring you in straight away. Once again, perfect. The smear in the smudges that were down, the smear in the smudges that were down the bottom corner there, Fixed, back to as it was. Paint's looking nice by the way, look at that. Not bad for a paint enhancement. The vehicle's done 12,000 miles. So the point of that exercise was to say that if you have a glass cleaner currently, uh, you try something new, don't immediately be disappointed or discount the product and put it to one side never to use again because it doesn't work. Just because this didn't work with my usual combination, which I've been used to for years. Try a new towel, try a new technique, try a new method. The longer pile microfibers wick up the residue better than the, what the waffle weave towel did. The problem with these slider sun visors, as opposed to the ones with the flap, um, some manufacturers like different things, is there's lubrication on the runners. The sliders have grease essentially to help the operation. Now our problem is cleaning that area because normally you get fingerprints and makeup foundation, whatever. Our problem is being able to clean that without picking the grease up on the towel, which is then gonna contaminate the towel and forevermore leave smudges and you just forever chase your towel. So still using Enzo's Pure View, Kirtland towel. Do I have any tips and tricks for that not to happen? Not really. I guess don't get too close to the edges, but what good is that when you're trying to clean? You know what? That's fine, actually. There's no issues. Okay, there we go. Spoke too soon. Come here, you. All right, one second later, that was perfect. And then the final buff, the final wipe, I picked something up. So that is gonna be forever in its tail. And this is the problem we have. Contamination. Okay, finally, we're there. There's a reason I saved the visors. There's a reason I saved the visors on the glass cleaning process. Till last, can you imagine if you've sort of done the interior glass, you've still got the outside to do, this towel has now got that grease somewhere in here. So you're gonna be forever chasing your towel, trying to work out where the smudges are coming from. Okay, at this point, if you were closer, you would see the windscreen is still a bit smeary from the polish wipe that performed earlier on. I have purposely not touched the windscreen thus far. On this job, the customer has actually specified and requested application of G-Technic G1 glass repellents. The idea is it's a ceramic, essentially the same as the paint and the wheels, protection to assist the removal of water droplets on the windscreen to remove the need for wiper blades, essentially. There are a lot of rain repellents available on the market, be it G-Technics, be it CarPro Flyby 40, be it Geon View. Angel Wax H2 Go. I personally, at the minute, on my own vehicle, the BMW Touring, I am testing Modesta EGC, exterior glass coating. Because I'm testing Modestas on my own car, I went through a phase of not actually offering this as an available bolt on. It's a great system when it works. The prep, the application, the temperatures, humidity, everything can be perfect, but one in six or one in seven cars occasionally has issues with wiper hop, wiper judder over the windscreen. Essentially the glass is dry because the water's repelled that much that the wipers can sort of skip across the pane of the glass. 
which is a pain. It's a nuisance, it's a pest when the vehicle has left the shop and they maybe live two and a half hours away. If you do have that problem, G1 should be applied to the window wipers themselves uh, and it can improve over time. Before applying G10, it's G1. Again, customer request. The glass really needs polishing. It has been clay barred to remove bonded contaminants. But now the glass polish, a water-based citric acid-based polish is just gonna further cleanse the glass. This can be done by machine. Uh, I'm doing it by hand because most people watching will probably will be doing this by hand. They haven't got a machine polisher. You wanna avoid the surrounding rubbers or textured plastics. There's this G4 glass polish. Well, I'm out of breath. You can see it's starting to dry. It's starting to dust up now. It does leave a right mess if you get it on the plastics. So worth avoiding. Removal is with a damp towel. Carefully not to get it on the paintwork. I think if there was to be machine polishing the glass on this, I would have done that a lot earlier on. I would have done the machine polishing before the paintwork was finished because it can splatter, it can be dusty. Doing it now would be a little bit backwards. Right, polish, smeary as hell now. Neat isopropyl alcohol. Watching the paintwork. Isopropyl alcohol, IPA, to get rid of any residues and not leave any residues behind itself. Give it a couple of applications. You know what I said about watching where, watching out where you get the uh, glass polish. On the scuttle, I've gone too low, so you can see the white. Yeah, that's a pain. Now I've got to deal with that before the coating goes down, really. Um, textured magic sponge, IPA and sponge. Is that gonna dissolve the sponge? Probably. That's done the job anyway. All right, it's been a while since I've applied this. Three coats to the front, five minutes apart, and a single coat for the sides from what I remember. Small cotton makeup pad is supplied. Small little circles. It's worth noting that most of this, well, all of this happening really wants to be done in the shade. You don't want to be, <coughs> you don't want to be doing this outside in the sun. All right, first coat. I've got five minutes now before the second coat. So I'll start to do the sides in the wind mirror. When you're doing this sort of stuff and you've got the product in your hand, it's always worth keeping your thumb locked well over the top. The last thing you want to be doing when you're doing this is it splashing out everywhere. You'll have noticed I've not spent the same time polishing the side windows like I did the front. It is the front windscreen, especially having the wipers that needs the attention before the coating goes down. It's 
open to abrasions from bud splats and just general a lot more wear and tear because it's front facing the sides not so much you can get away with in this instance i can get away with using this coating uh, straight down to the glass it's clean if you had a panoramic roof however you might be as well after claying the vehicle claying the glass using the water spot remover up there uh, you could there might be some benefit of doing the panoramic roof section with the polish but these side windows are pretty straightforward second coat for the windscreen three coats in total straight over the first continue in the small circles every application for this sort of product is unique to the product some will be a spray and wipe some will be apply and buff after one minute some will be apply and buff immediately this is quite forgiving you can leave it recommendation is 15 minutes but you can leave it overnight and still not have a problem removing it the following day which is fine okay that's two down on the third and final application we're going to just degrease the wiper blades clean them I will show you how much dirt comes off in the towel from the blades and then apply G1 to the blades afterwards once they're dry as well. Three coats down, IPA, saturate the towel, and now I need to pinch the wiper, pinch the rubber. It's clean. It's difficult because these don't come all the way up. It gets restricted by the bonnet. Just do the best you can. You see the dirt? The red arrow's going over, if you can hear that. Coating the rubber in G1 to try help against the potential wiper hop issue. Okay. We'll leave it there for 20 minutes. Time for a coffee. Whilst the kettle boils, if you were interested in trying any of the Enzo range, um, there's a discount code now available. It's a new product line to me. As I say, I have been testing it, I've been using it. Uh, the quick detailer I've used on my own car three times, four times, as you can see, a little goes a very long way. Clay lube, if you like to lubricate your clay bar still with something other than water. Tire dressing is very nice. Wheel cleaner is a fallout removing safe wheel cleaner for all wheel types. Very nice tire cleaner as well. These two together, the tire cleaner and the dressing are lovely. I've used the cleaner on these Audi wheels and I'll use that to dress them. And there is a ceramic shampoo as well, which actually my dad has pinched. Dad has disappeared with Enzo One, which is a ceramic boosting or ceramic helping um, shampoo for maintenance washes on ceramic vehicles. Again, not forgetting Enzo is the consumer range and the retail range of Modesta. So these systems work alongside the high-end coatings that are available, BC08, BC04 and 5. Discount code WD10, 10% off if you want to try the range. As with the rest of the gear I'm using, uh, G Tech and Gion, whatever else I've mentioned, there are links in the video description down below. A good half an hour later, it's time to remove the coating. It's had its 15 minutes, it's pretty warm, it's pretty humid. When you buy the kit, you get a residue remover, as I say, some H2GO, Angel Wax, uh, Fly by 40, EGC, Modestas. Some you don't need uh, a secondary chemical to remove the residue that's left. Some of them are just a, a buff off, but this is a, a removal process. This essentially, it's an IPA. Because I used to use it a lot, I ended up buying a liter of it in a spray format, because that method, rather than this method, is a lot more efficient, a lot faster. So, G2 applied. I'll pull you in in a second to get a better shot, but essentially you allow the G2 to remove G1. But when you're spraying it, it's just a bit more efficient, a bit faster. And again, for me, it's speed. When using the remover, try not to do too big area. Again, I'll probably split this into eight quarters. Um, G2 soon evaporates, it soon dries out. And the quicker you get it over the entire G1 covering, the easier it's, 
is to remove. So now using the spray, it's just like cleaning the glass now. If you're thorough with this removal process, you can get away without, without having to clean the glass again. Uh, but to be honest, I'd like to just be doubly sure that it is all off and I will clean the glass. In a couple of days time, I have the vehicle here for another three days, although it's essentially now finished. But just to give the coating time to remain dry before it gets wet using the G6 cleaner, I don't want to do that straight away. I want to give it at least 24 hours before using that. That's it. One Navara Blue Audi S3. Single stage machine polish, coatings, wheels, calipers, exhausts, thoroughly cleaned glass, and glass that's coated. Outside the sun is kind of partially out, um, so if there's opportunity in the next few hours or tomorrow to get the Audi outside in the sun, I will record some form of after footage. I hope you've enjoyed. If you've learned something, if there's been anything you've taken away, whether that has been the fact that using gloves is a big help, the fact that multiple cleaners don't necessarily mean just because it's not working with that towel combination, it's no good, it's garbage. Flip and change the towel combinations maybe worth trying. It might be the fact that the sun visors with the little slider, they're a pain in the ass. Or quite simply, it might be that you need to do the cleaner process much faster to get better results. But thank you for watching if you've made it this far. With that said, subscribe if you're not already. See you in the next one.